How many people know that this really, this book really is true? Yes. Uh, this is really the word of God. Amen. Yes. And whatever He says He can do, He can do. Do you believe that? Yes. This uh, this is an amazing thing. We saw so many people that uh, came out with pain in their body, and they were touching their toes and things like that. And of course, I had to say, I can touch my toes. <laughs> but uh, just saw people uh, tremendously touched and healed, and uh, it was really, really exciting to be there. Amen. But as Nancy said, I'm so excited. I'm pumped to be home. And uh, I just believe that God's going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever imagine or think. I believe that our revival's in the air. I really sense revival in the air. Do you sense there's a, I don't know, but it doesn't mean there's not going to be a fight. It doesn't mean that, uh, but it means we're going to win. Do you believe it? And I am so excited and uh, I got up the other morning because I couldn't sleep about two o'clock and just went out into my office and just sat down there and just started to talk to God and just started to download something to me that I want to really share with you this morning. So Father, I just pray right now for the anointing of God just to be so made manifest in this house. Father, I pray that you'd break through and, and push through and smash every work of the enemy. Lord, that uh, we could be your people and, and Lord, we'd be able to testify to the power of God and that will give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen. See, when, when God wrote this book, the Bible, through many authors, but inspired by the one, the Holy Spirit. How many people believe that? Uh, his desire was to, to tell us some stuff. This book is, is God's letter to us. It's not just something there that you read, but it's, it's God's instruction to us. It's God's word to us. It's very, very important. But he, when he did it, there was a desire to tell us through revelation. Everybody say revelation. Through revelation. And, you know, there's nothing better than to be able, when you're reading the word and all of a sudden you get a revelation. You know what I'm talking about? You get a revelation about something and all of a sudden something, something that you've read a hundred times becomes real. And, and you break through some stuff there. But a revelation of this word, I believe what, it, what he really wants us to know, who we are, the church, who we really are in Christ Jesus. We are not some misfit bunch. We're not some bunch of religious turkeys. I believe the spirit of life runs in us. Amen. I believe that but God wants us to really know who we are in Christ and what we could do and have through his name. He wants us to really know what we can do and what we can have. I believe that he wants to uh, warn us about our enemies. How many people know that there's enemies? Enemies of faith. The enemy comes to rob, to kill and destroy. The church, I believe that we are God's prized possession. If we can start to realize some things that we're not just a bunch of losers or something like that, people that have a lot of lost thing or hurt or whatever it is and all of a sudden we need a crutch we need somebody to help us through life no we are God's prized possession you are God's prized possession the enemy might try to want you to think that you're no good that you'll never make it but really the truth of the matter is and I pray that we all get a revelation that you and I are God's prized possession you might have made some mistakes and things like that See, he sent his only son to die for us. That's how important we are. That's how, that's how much he loves us. That's how much he cares for us. So that he might have many sons. Jesus died. His life went as a seed into the ground so God could have many sons and daughters called the church. The church the place of the living God. God wanted a family. You are not a nobody but you are a child of God. That's who I am today. See, what, what we can do and have, I believe that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I, I believe that God wants to visit us again. We are more than conquerors. A lot of times we get beat up a bit, but really the truth of the matter is we are more than conquerors. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I can triumph over the enemy. Satan's grip on me has been broken. As we heard at communion today, as we, as we come around the communion time, as we remember what Jesus Christ did for us, 
as we allow the revelation of it. As Chris explained today, that Jesus, with a boldness and with an authority, knowing that his life was ebbing from him, knowing that he'd paid the price, that he could say, and, and, and a friend, I want to say this, that we've got to understand the authority that were in those words, that as he said those words, it is finished. Something in the realm of the Spirit manifested itself and broke every chain and every fetter and every lie. See, we can, if we don't have a revelation, we can still live defeated and broken. But when you have a revelation of what Jesus has done, you can be set free. You can be totally set free. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Satan's grip on me has been broken. I'm filled with the mighty Holy Spirit power. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in me. I am accepted. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm forgiven. I'm a child of God. Our enemy, the devil, wants to rob, kill, and destroy our faith in this book called the Bible. He wants to do whatever he can to steal this word from our lives. But I'll tell you what, it's not going to happen, amen? Because <laughs> God wants us to have fellowship and relationship with him. Our enemy, the, our enemy, the devil, goes around like a roaring lion, seeking those whom he may devour. He's got a plan. He's got a thing there. If he can rob the word of God from us, if he can take this word out of our lives and say, well, it's really not for you, it's not for that, it, that there's no healing today or, or whatever, we've got to, got to keep the word of God in front of us, haven't we? Our old enemy, the flesh, is Satan's greatest weapon. He works on our emotions, our will, our past failures and rejections. There's most likely not one person in this room that hasn't, been affected somewhere along the line by rejection, hurts, disappointments, goodness knows what else. But the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And that's what we want. How many people want to be free? Moses' heart was right, but his emotions caused him to kill an Egyptian. His heart was right. He wanted to see his people set free. He wanted, that's what he wanted. But you see, his emotions got involved. His emotions caused him to, to do something that really he didn't want to do, to kill an Egyptian guard. Sometimes we make quick decisions and we pay the price. Pay the price for that. 1 Corinthians 2.9. I want to just read some scriptures here to you. 1 Corinthians This is what it says. It says, but as it is written, eye has not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. I heard for many, many years that, you know, we couldn't really understand because they just quoted the first part of that scripture. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man the things that God really has prepared for us. But then it goes on and it says, but God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. What I was saying before, friend, we need to be in touch with God. We need a revelation. We need the Word of God to be able to speak to us. We need to, to have it enlightened so that we can really see what God is saying. He wants us to overcome. He wants us to triumph. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. You cannot understand the Word of God without the Spirit. It becomes foolishness to us. Now you have not received the Spirit of this world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things which have been freely, everybody say freely, given to us. 
We sometimes think that it's, you know, we've just been sort of just get by, but God has freely given us everything that we need to live this life. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but that which in the Holy Spirit teaches. Amen. Things that are spirit, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. It's an amazing book, this book. Amen. Eye has not seen, but God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. You see, the need to be filled with God's Holy Spirit. We really need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. In the Acts 1 4, this is what Jesus said. He said to his disciples, He said, Wait for the promise. Don't go anywhere until you receive the promise. These really were the last words before Jesus was taken up to take his place on the throne at the right hand of God. Here he is with his disciples and and he's not just going to tell them things that aren't important. Can I say this, friends? I believe one of the most important things for every Christian is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Is to allow the mighty Holy Spirit to come into your life. To be endured with power from on high. The disciples, when they heard this, they didn't really understand and they started to ask questions about what does this really mean? Is this when you're going to come back and, and, and you know, build again the kingdom or what? He said, this is not for you to know, but what I want you to know, what I really want you to know is you will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you're going to be witnesses under me. And the thing that I believe that God wanted to speak to me about is this, that I believe as a church, we've got to start to do a little bit of changing in the way we see things and the way we do things. I believe that, friends, it's nice to come to church and sit around and and have time of worship and praise. It's nice to come and and listen to to preaching and different things like that and and be encouraged and, and, and prayed for and different things like that when you've got need. But I want to tell you that I believe that the, one of the main purposes of the mighty Holy Spirit outpouring in your life is to cause you to become a witness. And if there's one thing where there's a drought in the church today is that we don't go out and declare what Jesus Christ has done for us. As we don't go out there and, and proclaim the Word of God, that we don't go out there and become a witness. See, God, I believe, wants us to be witnesses out there. That doesn't mean that you go around with a big placard telling us that the world's going to end and different things like that. But what it means is that you get in, in somebody's face and you tell them lovingly and kindly that Jesus loves them. Amen? That Jesus died for them. And what, what amazes me is this. There's something that gets inside of us that says people don't want to know about that. Because we've, we've said there's two things that you shouldn't talk about, religion and politics. Well, I want to tell you, they're most probably the, most, the two largest topics in the world at the moment. Amen? But we're told we shouldn't do it. Friend, and so we sort of think, well, I, I can't do that. No, I want to tell you, friend, I'm not saying to get all religious about it, but what I'm saying is share your faith. Share what God, because there's a world out there that are dying to hear what you've got to say. There's a bunch of people out there that without you, they most surely will never ever find the reality. There are people there that that have got, you know, God's got you connected to them if you can just get hold of them. It's not a time to be quiet. I believe it's a time to speak out. It's time to, it says, wait for it. When, When the might of the Holy Spirit came, it didn't come as a thief in the night. You know, friend, I believe we've just got to change some concepts, some thinking. The Holy Spirit just didn't, didn't sneak in. The Bible says there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind. And when this sound occurred, it filled the whole house, the whole place where they were sitting. We were singing about it tonight, this morning. Like a mighty rushing wind. See, the Holy Spirit, He's not just going to come around sneaking around. I want to tell you, there's a roar. I believe there's a sound that's going to come out of the church. There's a sound that's going to come out of you. There's a sound that's going to come out of me. There's a sound of victory. There's a sound of praise. There's a sound of, I don't know what it is, a sound of triumph. There's got to come a shout out of the camp. 
God can touch people. There's a man there that had a, like a shoulder and all of a sudden dramatically, instantly healed. I, I don't know how many people I saw that with backs and different things like that immediately just said that they were, they were healed. I, I actually was, I was moving in a, in a different sort of realm. I remember this one man, I, I, I can't, it, it was, he was like a, uh, how would you put it? Uh, he looked like he was on welfare. It was, anyhow, I, I had a word of knowledge about somebody with a, with a condition in their throat. And this guy got out and he walked over and I went over to him and I grabbed him by the throat. I think he thought I was going to choke him. But I, I grabbed all that thing out and I realized I, I was getting a little bit too aggressive. <laughs> He, he, he looked at me and I said, how's that? He said, good, good. And he took off. No, 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 I don't know if it was or if it wasn't. But he was getting out of there because he thought this bloke's going to kill me. I don't know if he'll ever come back to church again. But, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's a, an authority. There's, a, there's something there that God wants to do and, in, in our lives and in the church, I believe, that we'll go out there and a and I know we've, I've been speaking about it a lot, but there's got to come a boldness over our lives where, we, where we'll share Jesus with people. Go out there and tell people about the Christ. Go out there and tell Him how great He is. Wait for the promise. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You're going to be a witness unto me. And, and I believe that the church has got to find again the witness. That when the Holy Spirit came, He came in a rush. In Acts 2, 1, it says, this great sound was heard. The multitude came together. Multitudes, not just a few, but literally thousands upon thousands. I, I honestly believe that a city can be saved in a night. I, I believe that, you know, we're just, just going to see a trickle, but I believe that we can see a revival fire that will go out there and touch many, many people. Not just ones or twos, but we've got to stir ourselves. Is it okay to talk like that? How many people realize we've got to stir ourselves and challenge ourselves? And I remember what it was like there a few years back there when we were going witnessing in the, in the shopping center and things like that. And, you know, it, it came a challenge because we, we sort of, you can, you can settle back. You know what I'm talking about? And I, I can remember, I saw this lady walking in on a, with her crutches and, and she sat down and, and uh, I'm looking at her there and I'm thinking, man, I don't know. And anyhow, I, I thought she might have thought I was trying to pick her up if I walked over there. And uh, anyhow, her son came and, and, and sat with her, so I felt okay then. So I walked over and I said, it's very obvious, lady, you're in pain. She said, I'm in excruciating pain. I said, do you mind, can I pray for you? You know, she never said, get out of my face. She said, would you please? People, uh, you know what I mean? You, you just don't, be, don't do it silly, but just go out there and, and be the church. Amen. Pray for people. Believe God to, to work through you. So there's a multitude came and, and you know, I, I believe it's going to come again. Amen. Just have a quick look with me in the book of Acts. It's, it's, in Acts chapter 2, it says, And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them divided tongues as a fire, and it sat on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What an amazing thing. They were, people were amazed and perplexed. But then, you know, Peter stood up and he said these words. And as he spoke these words, everybody heard it. In verse 17, and it says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. Friend, I want to tell you, everything that's in this book, it will come to pass. Everything that God's ever said will come to pass. Amen. It's going to come. He's going to have a move of the Spirit. He's going to have a revival. He's going to have an outpouring. Listen to this. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. That's not sitting there dreaming about going here or going there. This is dreams about revival. I want every old man in this house to start dreaming big dreams about revival. Hallelujah. That God God would breathe again on the gifts of your life, that God would stir again something on the inside of us, that there would come a challenge and we would just know that God has put his hand on our lives. Amen. 
Your old men shall dream dreams, and on your men servant and on your maid servant, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and you shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. What an amazing thing. The, the outpouring of the Spirit wasn't just there so as that we could play tiddlywinks or we could join the Tongue Talkers Club. or we could No, it was so as that we would become witnesses under Him. I praise God that Jesus was an amazing witness. Do you believe that today? He was an amazing witness. They all heard Peter say, it shall come to pass. When God wrote this book, He spoke from His, from his perspective. What we've got to realize is that God, this word is God's word. God says, God calls things that be not as though they were. This book is God's ultimate, amen. We have fallen so far or drifted so far away from what this book really says. And what the church tries to do now is get God to come down to our level where God wants to bring us up to His level. That's why Jesus said to us, He said, listen here guys, the things that I do, you can do also. And even greater things than this can you do. This book is God's ultimate word. It says who we are, what we are, what we can do and what we can have, amen? Amen. But your mind, and as I said before, your greatest enemy is your natural flesh. And your natural flesh will say to you, you're not good enough, or you'll never make it, or this or that, or I don't care what it says, but it pulls you down. And then in our prayer time, we're trying to say, oh God, will you do this? And, and, and somehow or other, we try to bring God down so He can work with our level. He says, no boy. He said, I want you to come up to where I belong. I want you to live where I live. And friend, the church today, because of its lack of power and lack of whatever else it's got, God, I believe, is going to do an amazing thing. There's going to come a revelation. We're going to see miracles. When we see miracles, I say something happens in your faith. That first man that I prayed for, as soon as he got healed, I ought to tell you, it released something in the, in the atmosphere. People got healed. That girl in that other meeting, she got healed sitting in a seat because there was an atmosphere there. God will build an atmosphere of healings and deliverance and praise and worship as we, as we enter in. As God knows your heart, God sees you. He will help us. Amen. Two. I'm, I am excited about what God can do and what God is going to do. He spoke from his perspective. He spoke to us and he said, listen here, this is what I want to tell you. You can have whatever you say. You listen, to, you listen to what God says about you. You listen to what Jesus says about you, what we can have. And then just have a little look at where you're living and realize that we've got to climb the ladder. It's called the ladder of faith. And what happens, I want to tell you what will stir your faith more than anything else. More than just sitting in a church and singing lullabies or singing songs and hymns, which is wonderful. I praise God for that. But I want to tell you the moment that you lay your hands on a sick person and they get healed, the moment there that you find somebody there that's lost and you lead them to Christ and you see the tears rolling down their face, I want to tell you there's something that will lift your faith. It'll take you to another level. It'll do something on the inside of you. I don't know about you, but I'm getting stirred up in the Holy Ghost and I pray that you'll get stirred up as well. Amen. You've got to stir the gift. You've got to stir something up inside you. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. If you don't stir it up, it dies. Jesus was our example. He, he's told us so much that we can do. He spoke from his perspective. He said, well, you can have whatever you want. He, 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 just, he, he, he just stood up there one day and said, let there be light. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you see, you know what I mean? We've, I, I say this many, many times, but in the early days of Christian Outreach Center, when we were praying up there in the, in the gatehouse, in the uh, pineapple shed, 
We were just praying. I didn't know what to pray. I didn't know how to do things because there's that many people on the altar call. So I just go, come out, be loosed, be healed, whatever it was. <laughs> and choo, 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 choo. But David Ironside knew that I didn't have the formula right and he would come up behind me and say, in Jesus' name. In Je-. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you know, it's not, a, oh, God Almighty, Creator. No, come out. <laughs> now, I was praying for that. On the altar call, people were getting slain in the Spirit and people were getting healed. And, and I, blessed lady got slain in the Spirit. Next minute, she started jumping about six inches off the floor. I thought, oh, that's interesting. And she said, I, didn't, I, didn't. <laughs> and I, had, I still had hold of this other person. Come out. <laughs> and she lifted about a foot off the floor. I'm not, I'm, she just lifted and she back down and she shook her head and looked at me and smiled at me. I said, you feel better now? She said, yep. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Who can catch my drift here? I'm not trying to, you know, I, we, we, want to, we want to make it hard. Because Jesus wants to make it easy for us. Just go out and just do it. That nothing will raise your faith stronger and get you on fire for God more than starting to see God do things in your life. God doing things through you. That's what God's about. God knows what's, what's possible for a believer. Jesus knows, he said, the things that I do, you can do also. I believe that with every fiber of my being. God, I believe, uh, reveals the truth through His Spirit. Man flesh only sees the promises through logic. You know, today we can, we can do a lot of things through logic. God wants to do it through His Spirit. Do you believe that? God wants to lift our believing to where He is. Faith in God. God kind of faith. I believe that Jesus wants us to attack unbelief. We've got to attack unbelief in our lives. We've got to attack it. I, 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 God, Jesus is our example. I'd like for you to open up your Bibles, if you would, to uh, John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Amazing verses of Scripture here. This is, it'll do you good to read the whole of, of, of John uh, 11. But here is, 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 he's got a friend, Lazarus, who is sick. Lazarus, Lazarus dies. Jesus is talking to his disciples. They, they don't know what he's doing. And he says, oh, he's asleep. It's okay. Uh, and then then they, they say, oh, if he's asleep, it's okay. He says, listen, boys, he's dead. The situation that... that they were going into was a very, very hostile environment because they were seeking to kill Jesus. And the disciples thought, well, if he goes, they'll kill us as well. That's why Thomas said, all right, why don't we all go and get killed? Because it was a hostile environment. Jesus gets into this situation here. And of course, Mary comes up, Martha comes up and they start talking, oh, if only you were here. If only you were here before. If only, you know, friend, I want to tell you the if onlys have got to get out of our life. Jesus is always with us, amen? If only you would have come before, this wouldn't have happened. Jesus gets into, into a situation here and, and, and he's talking, uh, uh, trying to bring something of reality to, to Mary and Martha and that and, and says, you know, didn't I tell you that, that you know, that, that he can be raised up and she got all religious on him and said, oh, I know in the last days and this and this. And, and, and they end up, Jesus ended up weeping. And the people around said, oh, how much he must have loved Lazarus. Now, I, I don't believe it was that at all. Jesus knew exactly what he could do with Lazarus. What he was weeping about, I think, is the unbelief. The unbelief. And that's why what I'm saying is we've got to attack unbelief. And that's what Jesus did here. You, look, please paint the picture and see Jesus walking into this environment. The mourners are there. They're all weeping and carrying on. And if only, oh, this is going on. And Jesus walks in full of faith, full of victory, full of purpose, full of power, knowing that he could do whatever he wanted to do. He could have whatever he wanted. He could, you know, here he is. And he walks into this situation and they're carrying on something chronic. 
And, and instead of allowing the negative environment to get around him, listen to this, there's a real key here. Don't allow the negative environment that you associate with get inside of you. He did not allow that negative environment to get inside of him. He walked up to there. He wept, yes, because of their unbelief, their hardness of heart. But then he walked up in there in the middle of death and the middle of that negativity, failure and defeat. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He was attacking that spirit that was coming against him. He was attacking that negativity that was coming against him. He was, he could, he was surrounded by it. Every, all of his friends, all of his loved ones, everybody there was in total negativity. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me will never die. I will never die. Hallelujah. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me. And he attacked that death. He attacked that thing. Church, we must rise up and attack the spirit of lethargy, the unclean world that surrounds this city that we live in. And we've got to raise up a standard against it in Jesus' name. And it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit. Then Jesus said something that amazed me. He walked over and said, where have you buried him? Can I say this? Where have you buried your vision and your dream and your purpose and your God-given gifts? And no, I, I know my life, I thought it was over. <laughs> they told me that I was past my use-by date. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, there's some 85 year olds got more power of God in their little finger than some of those. <laughs> and <laughs> Praise God, amen. Where have you laid him? Where have you buried him? I want to tell you there's a word that I believe that Jesus is speaking over this church today. It's saying, roll the stone away. <laughs> Listen to it. Roll the stone away. I believe that we, many people have buried their potential, buried their dreams, buried, oh, dreams. Dream, dream, dream. Dream, dream, dream of greatness. Dream of a Holy Ghost revival where we see people. Nancy often comes to me as we're walking down the street and we see somebody there that, that's crippled up and things like that. And she looks at me with tears basically in her eyes and she said, Neil, I long for the day when we can walk up to those people and say, come out of him. Yeah. <laughs> we're not there yet, but if you don't aim for it, you'll never hit it. If you're not having a go at it, You'll never make it. If you just let lethargy and everything else get around us and say it'll never happen for us and ah, blah, blah, blah. No, I want to tell you, it's going to happen. It will happen because Jesus said it was going to happen. In the last days, I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, hallelujah. And your old men are going to dream dreams again. Dreams of greatness, hallelujah. Dreams of revival. Where have you buried your vision, your dream, your plan, your purpose, your life? Jesus says, roll the stone away. I believe that's what he's doing in the realm of the spirit. He's rolling the stone away from our lives. And he says, come out. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, he didn't have to say it twice. But what he had to do, he had to say Lazarus. If he hadn't said Lazarus, if he just would have said come out like I just did, everybody that ever died would have come out. <laughs> hey? Then he would have had a problem. <laughs> but I want to tell you, I believe he's calling us by name. Sharon, the stone has been rolled away. Roma, you know the stone was rolled away, haven't you? <laughs> You know it, girl. You're coming out. You're seeing it. You're seeing people set free. Greg, come on. This is what it's all about. Put your name in there. Neil, the stone's rolled away. I'm not going to be put off by anything other than what God tells me. Will that do you? 
Stone is rolled away. The stone is rolled away. Jesus walked into that total negativity. I believe we face negativity and and the stench of failure is all around us. But don't bow to it. Attack it. Attack it. I believe that Jesus is doing some mighty things. Where have you laid him? Some of us have got to go back to that place. We've got to go back to that place where we've laid our dreams down. Amen. Where we've laid our visions down. Where we've laid our whatever it might be down. I want to tell you, I believe that God has got a purpose and a plan for every life. Dreams that I dreamed about years ago, I believe, are going to come to pass. Prophetic words that have been spoken over our lives years ago are still going to come to pass. They're still alive. Amen. He spoke to Prophet Joel through the Prophet Joel a long, long time ago. But then the man of God stood up and said, this day, this is what's happening. I want to be able to stand in front of this church, friends, and say this is what God's doing as we see the power of God. Amen. Can you understand with me today that we've got to attack some things? Amen. I want you to stand to your feet with me right now. This is our fifth birthday today. Our fifth birthday. We've been here five years. Glory to God. What an amazing thing. What an amazing journey. What an amazing time we've had. People's lives, seen people, many been transformed. But can I say this? Where have you buried your giftings? Where have you buried your boldness? Where have you buried the plan that God had for your life? Where have you buried it? Because if you go back to that place, you'll find the stone has rolled away. And I want to tell you, you can go in there and pick it all up again. And if you're sincere and if you're real today, if you really, 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 really want to come out of that situation and allow the juices, the juice of the Holy Ghost. Is that a, is that a good thing? I see you got metamorphosized up there. Yeah, that's a word. I invented that one a couple of weeks ago. But the juice of the Holy Ghost. Smithy, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Are you hungry for that again? Can I create a hunger in you to get, to break out of, to go and attack that which has got to be attacked, to smash down every filthy lie of that defeated foe that's already tried, that's tried to stop us, that we, the church, would rise up and go out there and proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, go out and lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Just have a look at what God says about the Holy Ghost. We might preach about this a bit later on, but glory to God, amen. We're just going to have a go. When we finish uh, with Clark on Sunday, and it's going to come there Sunday night, as from this week, as from that week on, we're going to start Sunday night meetings. We're going to believe for healings and deliverance. We're going to believe for salvations and more. But I want to tell you, friends, I'm going to need a bunch of people like you that are stirred up, hallelujah, that will go out there into the highways and byways and invite people to come, amen. You can preach a gospel message, but if there's nobody to get saved, you won't get anybody saved. <laughs> that right? But if they, you can go out there and bring the lost in, I want to tell you, I'll preach my little heart out and I'm going to do everything I can to see people saved. But if you're here today and you want God to get inside you and start to stir things up again, if you want to go in there and attack that unbelief or that negativity or whatever it might be that stopped you in the past, I want to tell you, come out the front, run out the front, do whatever you got to do, but get out here. I'm here. I want to get stirred up. Come on, you want to get stirred up again? You want the power of God to get inside of you? You want the anointing? You want to get healed? You want to get delivered? You want to be set free? Oh, I tell you what, the Holy Ghost is already here. Hallelujah. I tell you what, He's waiting for you. He's just waiting patiently. He's waiting, waiting, waiting. He's waiting there just to, to oh, hallelujah, Jesus.